What is up everybody? Hope everybody's doing well. So today I'm going to the airport and I'm gonna be picking up three boxes of fish. I'm really excited. I think we got some really cool stuff coming in. And I personally have a fish uh, that I ordered for myself for my little 20 gallon nano tank, which I'm really excited to share with you guys. Yes, finally, it's here. Can't wait to get this back. So back at the shop and I am so excited to open this box. So let's go ahead without further delay and let's get into it and let's see what we have. Ah, oh, it's like Christmas. All right, got some heat packs here. All right, here we go. First fish that I'm seeing is an Antheus. Look at that. Looks like a liar tail. Now with Antheus, it's so important to uh, keep them acclimating by themselves in a group of just Antheus. Uh, maybe with Chromis, just because of the fact that they uh, potentially could have uranema and other diseases that social fish get. So we're going to go ahead and keep these Antheus all together and uh, keep an eye on them because they are known for uranema. And that is something I want to avoid because it is extremely hard to deal with once uh, if it gets out of hand. What is this? Oh, it's look, it's a little baby uh, pajama cardinal floating in here. That is a little guy, hardly has any color to him. That's kind of a cool fish. Oh, look at this, an Alan I damsel. Really, oh, what am I, I've really gotten into this fish lately. I'm kind of uh, becoming more, uh, I don't know what's going on. When you first get in the hobby, damsels are the easiest fish to get, but um, I've been getting into damsels lately. Um, they're just they, they get so much color and then they don't grow too big I know they can be a little bit temperamental, but so can a lot of fish. I'm really been, been getting into damsels lately Next up is a bristle tooth tang uh, For those of you who are familiar with the coal tang it's from the bristle tooth tang family This is similar. I don't know if this is a blue eye. It's kind of hard to tell because of the color uh, Is off it's a it's a bit darker because it's been in the box for a while traveling this is a great utility fish, great for cleaning up your tank. Uh, you can see it's got a bit of the blue eye right there, but I uh, highly recommend this fish. Uh, highly recommend this if you're thinking about getting tangs because they do provide some work and keep your tank clean, but also they don't get crazy big like other tangs do. And then we, we got another one right here. This one's got a little bit more speckling on it. Really pretty. We'll be able to see him a little bit better once I get him out of the bag and acclimated. Can't go wrong with damsels. Uh, like I said, I'm getting into them again. Uh, I think they're just really cool. I and mean, look at this guy. I love the blue and the yellow. A lot of, add a lot of color to your tank. Next up, we have a Tamini Tang or Flame Fin Tamini Tang. This is a little guy. This is one of our more popular, uh, better selling fish. A lot of people want this for the simple fact that they, again, are utility fish, just like the uh, Coal Tangs and the Bristle Tooth Tangs. This is a part of the same family and uh, they do a really good job of kind of cleaning up some detritus and cleaning up some uh, pesky nuisance algae. This is why this fish is popular and also because it's a tang and people love tangs. Now, one of my all time favorite fish, this, uh, when I first got into the hobby, I've always wanted to keep one of these. Um, I've only had them once in my time in the hobby, but unfortunately it jumped out of my tank rather quickly learn soon thereafter to get a lid to put on top of your tank. But the flame hawkfish, beautiful. And I just, I love the red color and you don't see a lot of red in the reef hobby amongst fish. So I just love that red and I just love the way they kind of sit on the uh, rock work and just kind of look at everything that's going on. Just a cool, unique looking fish. Ooh, we got a sweet lips. Look at this guy, juvenile sweet lips. These guys can be very tricky to take care of. Um, I don't recommend this fish for your aquarium, but we do have a customer with a rather large aquarium that's been uh, wanting one of these for quite some time. So we special ordered it for him. Normally we don't carry these, but this is a sweet lips. I know that they're, they're pretty popular. Um, just look at them. You can see why this is a juvenile, the way they look like a juvenile. Um, they do change color as they get older. Another flame hawk fish. <laughs> they're really tempting me with this order. I want. I want one of these guys. And finally, and finally out of the first box, we have another flame fin to mini tang. Again, a, a bit bigger than the first one we saw, but a great fish as uh, far as adding to your cleanup crew. Box number two. I got 
we have another PJ Cardinal. This one's a bit bigger. You can see there's a bit more color on it. Bangai Cardinal. That's silver and black, really unique looking fish. Uh, pretty common in the hobby. Still like them a lot. PJ Cardinal again. Ooh, we got a bunch of these guys. Cleaner shrimp, one of the more popular invertebrates in the reef hobby. Just love that red color. And um, you know, it's just kind of cool to see them clean the fish in your aquarium. Always fun to have that interaction between them and the fish. Bangai Cardinal number two. Here we have a pistol shrimp right here. Speaking of cool invertebrates, hopefully we compare him with a uh, prawn goby. So box number two was just a lot of Bengai Cardinals. We have two, four, six Bengai Cardinals. Uh, we have four PJ Cardinals and then a bunch of cleaner shrimp and a pistol shrimp right here. So box number two was kind of just basically uh, a lot of the same. With the exception of this Antheus right here, which I believe is a, a liar tail i believe it's hard to tell he's kind of colored differently but uh we got a liar tail male antheus it looks like it's becoming a male or a very large female um yeah you know how i feel about antheus i'm a big fan but we got to get these guys in medication asap moving on to the third and final box that we have that's what we got Fish number one, more Antheus. I have a feeling we're gonna have a bunch of Antheus in this uh, in this box. We got ourselves a pygmy wrasse right here. Love these guys. Really pretty. Oh, we got some conks here, but the bag is completely dry, so there must have been a leak. So we'll have to get these guys uh, acclimated pretty soon. But we got some more conks here. Um, really cool addition to a cleanup crew. And I think they just look really, uh, I, I just love the way they look. Conks are really just a fun invertebrate for me. Oh, you guys, oh, I love this fish. Completely underrated in the hobby. The square spot or square back Antheus. I freaking love this fish. I want one so bad. Hopefully one day I can have one, but it's got that pink body with that. It could barely make it out. Once we get these guys acclimated, I can show you better, but a purple square right there. Oh, I love this fish. Now this would be the female. So the one, uh, the square antheus we saw before previously, that was the male. This is the female. So it doesn't have that square yet, only the males do. So we have a couple of females in here, which is really exciting. If you have not gotten into the wrasse game, you definitely need to. This is a female rhomboid wrasse, beautiful fish. I know it doesn't look like much in the bag, but trust me, look it up, it's gorgeous. And then just the rest of what's in box number three is a bunch of uh, liar tail antheus. So we do have a collection of antheus, which I'm happy to see. So look at this. These are ornate leopard, leopard wrasse. Now, I'm not used to dealing with these fish. I don't have much experience with them, to be honest. Usually I just deal with the regular leopard wrasse, but these are really, really pretty. Uh, I'm digging them. Now, guys, I do want to point out something. If you see that bruising, that mark right there towards the tail end, of this uh, damselfish, there's some, uh, there's that red mark there. It's a bit of bruising, it's discoloration, whatever you wanna call it. That looks like some type of parasite, some type of ciliate, a sign of something that's not very good. And I am going to, and you can see this, he's not looking too well either. I mean, I, obviously there's a stress of the flight and all that and the delivery, but that's a clear marking. He does not, let me pull him over here, have it. He does not have it on the opposite side and he's not swimming great either. You can tell right now. Um, I'm gonna keep him away from the other fish when when, when acclimating um, and try to treat him with meds as soon as I can, but he does not look good. So, But identifying that is critical because we don't want him to come in contact with any of the other fish. Yeah, it's unfortunate, but we're gonna have to try to treat him as soon as possible. He's breathing heavy. So all the signs of he's definitely got something and we're going to have to keep him separate from the other fish. Just take a look at that square back Antheus. Look at the colors on him. Even look at the iridescence that's kind of shining in the light. One of my, two of my favorite fish right here, getting acclimated, getting ready to go into the tank. Just, wow, I'm, I'm, I'm very, <laughs> very envious of uh, whoever's gonna get these fish. Amazing, highly recommend both of them. So real quick, I just want to point out, uh, I had this damsel isolated and away from 
every other fish. I did not acclimate him with the rest of the fish. I acclimate, acclimated him on his own. If you can see the reflection, you can see a bit of scarring um, on his back finnage. So if you can catch it over here, you can see that, that mark right there. That does not look good. He does not look very good. Um, he's been stressed with the shipment and he's definitely got some ciliate, some type of parasite, uranema or whatever, who knows, on him. And um, I'm gonna keep him isolated and in his own little two and a half gallon tank. And this way we can really zero in on treatment to see if we can help him. But uh, as of now, uh, it's, a, it's, it's very stressful and uh, let's hope he can pull through. I'm also gonna dose a bit of uh, chloroquine phosphate in here and hopefully that can clear that up. I will keep you guys posted. This will be an interesting, um, I think a, a interesting set of videos that we can do here, uh, seeing, you know, the progression or, um, you know, if this fish can get better uh, with this medication, if the quarantine worked, because he really came in here in bad shape and it'd be interesting to see if he can recover. Uh, like I said, he's in really bad shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and dose some chloroquine phosphate right now. And um, that's his first dose and we'll uh, hopefully we can get him uh, through the two weeks and we can get him uh, healed up here pretty soon. So we got all of the fish in their respective tanks. Look at the Bangai Cardinals. Oh my God, they look amazing under that blue light. Awesome. Then we have our two wrasse there. Chilling, looking much better, looking happy now. Good to see them looking good. And already the rhomboid wrasse is already coloring up pretty good. She's looking beautiful. She'll color, up, she'll color up even more. She's just uh, still a juvenile. And then we have our Antheas way back there hiding behind the sponge filter. Put a couple of PVC in there to kind of help them feel a little bit more uh, comfortable. In the back, we have our Sweet Lips. We have our Flame Hawk and uh, I think that's a Cold Tang uh, or the, the Bristle Tooth Tang. Oh no, sorry. And then we have the Tamini Tang back there and one of the Antheas over here, the tank beside it. Square back, blue eye coal tang. Uh, a flame hawk back there somewhere, again with the PVC there. Uh, we got the RAS there. Then in the 10 gallon tank, all the way to the back, we have our pajama cardinals and a Tamini tang. In a 10 gallon, we've already uh, started the medications. I've already, I've already started the medications day one. We've done half of the dose of medication. Some are under uh, copper, some of them are under chloroquine phosphate, depending on the type of fish. We've also started them on some Metro as well. And I'm gonna go ahead, gather up some food here and see if we can get them to eat. All right, Ryan, what are we feeding today? Live brine. So we're gonna feed some live brine right now. And let's see, I know it's been a long trip. Chances probably won't be good that they'll eat, but let's see what's up. So, Brian is in. And the bang guys are going at it right now. They've discovered it and they're responding well. And the wrasse is going after it. We just got two bites from the rhomboid wrasse. She is eating. That's a, you always like to see that. Good. And we're trying to feed the antheus right now. And they're all huddled there in the back. But once the brine shrimp make their way back there, hopefully they respond. So the antheas are getting a little bit braver. They're darting out and trying to grab some pieces of food. It, it just takes up, oh, there it goes. So they're looking like they're interested. They're showing interest. They're making movements towards the food. I think because we are here, they're a little bit more hesitant. So I'm gonna go ahead and back off and give them some space. Up, oh, yeah, they're eating, so that's good. And surprisingly, the sweet lips is act, reacting really well to the brine shrimp. That's pretty cool. He's zipping around getting it all. They are aggressive eaters. But guys, this is only day one. You know, the, the shipment, they are stressed out, so it is a good sign that they're eating. But again, it's only day one. Still got a long way to go. They have a four week quarantine period. Where we're gonna have to treat them with everything, make sure they're healthy. And now I wanna share with you the special fish that I ordered specifically for myself. It is, it is right here in this bag. It's a circus goby and it's going to be pretty dope to go into my 20 gallon nano tank that I have at home. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm done for the day. So I'm going to go ahead and pack up here and then we'll go ahead and acclimate him to my 20 gallon tank at home and get a better look at him. But this video has been long enough, so I'll cut it there. Um, 
and I will share that with you guys in another video if you're interested. Until then, I'll see you guys later. Have a good one.